Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this video tutorial, we're going to look at external hard drives and Lightroom. How to edit on an external hard drive, how to set up your catalogs, and kind of the workflow for using an external hard drive using Lightroom so that your photos are organized so that they're safe and backed up and also so that you have room on your computer and your workflow is fast enough without slowing Lightroom down. That's one of the real keys that you need to get around with external hard drives. So we're going to answer all those questions, show you my process, which is the simplest one I've been able to come up with over the years, and hopefully you can take something out of this. So let's dive in and do it. Alright, so we're going to make this as short and simple as I can because I like simple processes and that's really what this kind of workflow for external hard drives is all about. I've come up with the simplest solution for me because I saw all those different kind of workflow tutorials out there on YouTube and they were all really complicated. They had RAID arrays and these fancy stacks of hard drives that I really didn't understand and all of this backup software and that's just not me. I like things to be as simple as possible. I only do maybe 30, 40 shoots a year so I don't need to necessarily have this giant thing of you know, if I had 150 shoots a year, it'd be a different story. But for most of you, I'm imagining you're probably kind of like me. You might do a shoot, two shoots, three shoots a month. That's gonna work perfect for this solution. So everything comes down to two external hard drives. That's my entire workflow. It's super simple, super easy. I hope you like it. Nothing special about these hard drives. They're WD My Passports. They're four terabytes, which I found is about the right amount for me per year. So at the end of the year, this becomes my backup hard drive. So I just want it to be able to shoot all, hold all of my shoots for the year. So you can just check last year's photos for you, see what size that is, and that's kind of the approximate size you should get for your hard drive. Nothing special about this drive, it's just kind of the best bang for buck drive. It's reasonably fast, and I'll explain why the speed doesn't matter that much in a second. So I have that, and then I have my backup hard drive. They're identical drives, so I don't have to worry about storage. And then after I finish my shoot, I literally just drag that entire session over onto my backup drive. It's always an exact duplicate, and I always have two copies of my photos all the time. So when I get home from the shoot, and I take my SD card, and I put it into my computer, I import all of the photos onto my computer. After I've imported them onto my computer, I will edit the photos, but I won't touch that SD card. That SD card literally lives here beside my computer until I have finished editing the photos and transferred them onto this hard drive. The reason that I do that is because I always want to have two copies of my photos at once. Because things happen, you lose photos, your hard drive crashes, whatever, you always want to have two copies. So once I've actually transferred the photos onto this hard drive, then I can format the SD card. Likewise, I don't delete the photos off my computer until I've moved the photos from this hard drive as, and copied them onto this backup hard drive. So I always have two copies. That's the main thing. Now in terms of the actual way that I set up my collections and set up editing on an external hard drive, I'm going to show you that. We're going to dive onto the computer right now and let's do it. All right. So in front of me, I have my finder with our hard drive and our SD card from this recent shoot I'm going to be importing. So I've got my last year's hard drive here just to show you how I set things up. I've got engagements and weddings in this hard drive. And inside of that subfolder, you'll see that I have every single shoot that I did that year. It's organized by date and then the client's name. Now, if I was doing travel photos, this might be the date and the location. So May and it was Greece, right? But for weddings, this is just how I set it up. The couple's name, pretty easy to remember for me. You can also organize it by venue. It's really up to you. Inside of every folder, this is where the magic happens. I have the exact same thing. I've got my Lightroom catalog. I've got the exports from that particular session. And then I have the rejects and the selects. Rejects are just the photos I didn't keep and didn't export. Selects are the raw files that I did wind up editing and exporting. And then I have something down here called sneak peek raws, which is just the photos that I edited before I edited the rest of the shoot to give the clients as kind of a sneak preview of their photos. And most of the time, these wind up being the best photos from the shoot, so I tend to hold on to those so I can always reference them really quickly and have access to those raw files easily later on. So why do I do this? Why do I have every shoot have its own catalog? Because it's way easier to organize your photos, trust me. And because the smaller the catalog, the better Lightroom is going to perform. The more photos you have in your catalog, the slower Lightroom is going to work because it's going to have to load all of those files and all of those previews every time you open that catalog. Whereas this way, it's only going to load the photos from that specific shoot. And I find most of the time, I'm not actually trying to use photos from multiple shoots at once. Most of the time, I just need a photo from a specific shoot. Now, if you need to reference all of the best photos from all of these, for example, I'll show you how to set up a Lightroom catalog that does that and has all of the five-star photos 
that we can just really easily reference. Okay, so inside of Lightroom, I'm going to start here by going up to New Catalog. And I'm going to give my catalog a name, so we'll go with the date. 2020. It's not April 20th, but let's not worry about that. Then I'm going to go to my desktop and make a new folder. We're going to call it the same thing. And we'll give it a name, so we'll call it Ryan's Portraits. Okay? Now I've created a new folder, and that's because everything is going to go inside this folder. The RAWs, the Lightroom project, the exports, everything. And I'm creating it on my desktop because I have found that while you can use an external hard drive to edit off of, 99% of the time it's going to be faster to use your internal hard drive on your computer than it is to use that external hard drive. So what I do is I find that while I can't hold all of the photo shoots that I've taken for the year on my computer, I can hold the most recent one. So I'll use the most recent one that will be on my desktop and I'll edit it. And then after I've edited it, I'll move it over onto my external hard drive. Now, if I need to, obviously, I can open up this external hard drive and edit directly off of it, but it's going to be a lot slower. And so that's the reason that I just edit the most recent shoot. I keep it on the desktop. And then after that, if I need to reference it later on, once it's finished and edited off the hard drive, that's totally fine. I'm just going to maximize the speed that I have available by using the space on my computer right now. So we'll rename this Ryan's Portraits in Lightroom because it's the Lightroom catalog. And we'll create and bada bing, bada boom. You can see here we have our new catalog. Okay, so I'll grab my SD card, open up those raw files, and you can just drag that right into the import dialog, and Lightroom will automatically find those files. So we'll just select a few photos at random here, this one, this one, this one, and then we'll set it to copy. That's exactly what I leave it on every single time. Copy just means it's going to make a brand new copy of that raw file and move it into the folder that you've created your catalog in. Okay? Now we can rename our files. I personally just leave this off. Don't find that that helpful. One thing that you can add is copyright information. So we can get rid of this destination thing, this apply during import thing, and go metadata and new. And then you can enter in your copyright info if you'd like to have that added. That way the copyright will actually be baked into the photo and if someone posts it online you'll be able to track it down and get credit for that photo. So you can do that. You can create a new preset and then just have that automatically apply. Personally, I don't even bother with that because I'm YOLO. I just I want to have as simple a process as possible. <laughs> so let's hit import. And Lightroom is going to import this. Nothing special about this whole thing. I would go through. I'd edit these photos. And then after I've done that, I would go into Finder. I'd track down my folder on the desktop. And I would drag that onto my 2019 hard drive, if this were still 2019. It's not, but whatever. And now I've got it here, and I would put it under my subfolder for portrait shoots. And I would drag that in there, right? Bada bing, bada boom, easy and simple. Now once that is actually finished, you know, I've got, got it on here, I'm automatically going to pull up my backup hard drive, which I don't have plugged in for this video, but you can understand. I will take my backup hard drive. I'll grab this session and I'll drag it onto the backup hard drive as well once this is finished editing. It's that simple. Now, if you want to get slightly more crazy about this, let's say that later on I edit this and I want those changes to automatically be synced over to my backup hard drive, you could use ChronoSync, which I think is spelled like this, which is a program that will automatically allow you to make those kind of backups. So we can create a new task here. Let's get rid of this. Because my hard drives aren't both plugged in, it's not showing up with that task, but you can set it to automatically sync to hard drives. So automatically it will create a duplicate of this hard drive, and every time this hard drive gets changed, so let's say I import a new shoot, or I open this Lightroom catalog and make some changes, it's automatically going to copy that into the new hard drive. So you can do that if you want to. I think it costs about 40 bucks. I had it, I loved it for a while, and now I just found it's easier to honestly just drag it right over into my other hard drive and be done. So that's how I edit on the external hard drive. I edit first on the desktop, then I drag it onto the hard drive. I know that sounds like cheating, but trust me, I've experimented with a lot of different things using a lot of different hard drives. You're going to have the best performance if you just do it on your desktop or on your computer hard drive, and then you move it onto the external for kind of future stuff. Because in the future, if you want to just open up this Lightroom catalog, edit a few photos, no big deal. But if you've got hundreds and hundreds of photos to edit, you want the fastest possible performance, just do it on your internal hard drive and then move it over to the external for future use. Okay, now as I mentioned, let's say that you wanted to be able to access all of the best photos from all of your best weddings or your best travel photos, whatever. How do you do that? Well, to do that, we're going to create a new catalog and we're going to call this best hits because that just makes sense. 
And we're going to make this on our external hard drive right away. Best hits. OK, create. OK, so Lightroom has this catalog. And now what we can do is we can actually import the catalogs from other weddings. So I can go up here to File and Import Catalog. Doo -doo 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 import from another catalog, and then navigate to wherever the catalog is I want to grab my photos from. So in this case, we can go up to Weddings, and I can go up to this wedding, and I can grab it. Lightroom, bam, and I can hit Choose. Lightroom's going to look at that, and if it's an older catalog, it might have to update, so we'll just go, sure. It will think for a while, and then Lightroom is going to give me the option of importing all of the photos from that wedding into this master catalog. Now, the only problem with that is obviously we don't want to import all of the photos, we just want the best photos. So this works if you want to have all of your photos in one master catalog, you can do that. But if you want to get specific and only have the best photos, here's how you do it. We need to export those photos as a separate catalog. So I'm going to go up to my weddings, and let's say that I wanted to get the best hits from this wedding right here. We will open up that Lightroom catalog. So we'll grab this version of the Lightroom catalog. I edited it with two different styles, that's why it has two different names. So here we have all of the photos from this wedding. Now, assuming you've marked them as five stars or you know red or something like that for your favorites, all you do is just navigate to where you've done that. So we can sort by you know the color or by five stars, see what we've got. These are my favorites from the day, so I'm going to select these. And let's say that I wanted everything except for this last photo to be exported and in my best hits catalog. Well, I select all of them except for this last one. Then we'll go up to File, Export as Catalog. And now we're going to select only the export, only the selected photos. So make sure that that is checked. And we'll go best hits, Araya and Kane. OK. It doesn't really matter what you name this, because we're going to delete it right away anyways. But I'm just going to save that right here in our best hits area so I can find it easily. OK. It's going to do that. And it's automatically going to, if you select it, export all of the raw files as well. So that we have them all in one area and Lightroom is going to be able to track them down really easily. Now you're going to have to wait a minute or two, especially if you have more photos than this. But once that is finished, it's really going to be as simple as opening up our old Lightroom catalog. So we'll go up here to Open Recent Best Hits, and then we'll import these photos into there. So here's our Best Hits catalog now. We're going to go into File, Import from Catalog, and then I'm going to navigate to wherever I have that catalog. So we'll go up here to our Best Hits, Grab this Lightroom catalog, and now it's going to open up all of those files. So now we have just the ones that we've marked as the keepers, as the best hits, and those are going to be imported into this catalog, not all 500 photos from this wedding. Simple, easy, peasy. So you can do this with every single session. At the end of the session, all you have to do is just grab your favorites, export them as their own separate favorites catalog, and then later on, you can import them into your best hits, and then that way, when you're editing and you want to reference and grab all of the best photos from that year or from forever, you can have those all in one big master catalog. So that's exactly how you create a Lightroom master catalog and how I go about editing my photos on an external hard drive. Now, I'm not technically doing the editing on the external hard drive anymore, although I still do sometimes if I have to. Most of the time, I recommend doing it on your computer if possible and then moving those photos over onto an external hard drive. The key is actually keeping them in separate catalogs for every single shoot so that your Lightroom catalog functions as quickly as possible. And then you want to keep everything organized and in its own folder so that you can grab that and move it over, back it up, and always have a separate copy and just keep track of things. It makes things a lot easier if you stay organized and don't just have all your of your files in one jumbled hot mess. It's just way more work and way, way riskier business. You might lose great photos that way. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. Go ahead, take this kind of workflow and adapt it to your needs. It's really about coming up with something that works for you. This is just what works for me. It's not an example of the best perfect workflow. I'm sure there are better ones out there. So if you have tips of your own or just different questions or ideas, please leave them in the comments below. If this video was helpful, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe for great content. And let me know what you would like to see as far as tutorials go in the future. All right. Thanks so much. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.